Haryum, my dear viewers, welcome to the most enchanting world of English literature. In today's session, we shall summarize the short story, The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse, written by the Armenian-American novelist and short story writer William Saroyan. Marvelously captivating, the story records the exploits of an Armenian clan in Northern California at the turn of the 20th century. This is a simple yet gripping story about a stolen horse ride enjoyed by two Armenian boys, Aram, 9 years, and his cousin Morad, 13 years of age. They belong to the Garoglanian tribe, a group of people who had gained popularity because they strictly adhered to or followed the principles of honesty and hospitality in spite of their extreme poverty-stricken conditions. Resorting to any kind of unfair means to overcome the challenges that life offered them was indeed unimaginable to the members of this clan. They knew the art of living, to drink life to the least, that is, to live life to the fullest. The story opens with Aram's reflections of a glorious morning in his childhood. It is in the wee hours of one fine morning when Aram is woken up by his cousin Morad, who is seated on an exquisite white horse. Morad invites Aram to join him for a ride. Although Aram had been nurturing a longing a strong desire to ride a horse, he is fully conscious of the abject poverty-stricken conditions of his Garoglanian tribe. But he does not hasten to judge Morad's deed, though he knows that there could be no way his cousin could buy a horse, brushing aside the other obvious alternative of stealing it. Morad, we are told, is known for his eccentricities and crazy demeanour, which he has inherited from his uncle Kozrov. For Morad, life indeed is a grand celebration and Aram joyously envied him. So, Aram justifies the deed with this statement, Stealing a horse for money is a serious offence, but stealing just for a ride is certainly pardonable. Hence, Aram joins Morad to experience the opportunity of his lifetime. During the ride, we are convinced that Morad has been enjoying this ride for some days and has tamed the horse so well. Morad does not deny the fact that he has stolen the horse but refuses to share its details in order to protect Aram's innocence. When Morad rides alone with the horse, it is a beautiful sight. The horse and the boy appear to have a perfect understanding and harmony. But when it is Aram's turn to ride, the horse leaps over, making him fall. The horse is taken back to its hiding place, a deserted vineyard. A few days later, Aram overhears a conversation between his uncle Kozrov and a visitor, John Bairo, an Assyrian farmer. Bairo was complaining about his horse that had gone missing for more than a month. Kozrov is short-tempered and finds everything around him as a source of perennial irritation. He had the same reaction to all situations. It's no harm. Pay no attention to it. Aram recounts John Bairo's visit and about his missing horse to Morad. A few days later, there is a chance meeting between the boys and John Bairo. The farmer sees his horse in the possession of the two boys but does not suspect them because he strongly believes that the boys belong to the Garoglanian tribe who would never stray from the path of honesty and integrity. The boys are obviously conscious-stricken 
and their sense of pride in their community plods them to curb their desire to enjoy the stolen horse ride and focus on upholding the values that their clan has become synonymous with. So they return the horse to its rightful owner. John Byro is overjoyed. His horse is now better groomed and tamed. So that was a simple synopsis of the story. Hope you enjoyed it, my dear viewers. Thank you very much. Bye. Take care. Happy learning. Keep smiling. Hari Om.